the Magin T300 Smart Trainer. Today I look into all the details, my ride review and a ton of data from a number of rides in the Llama Lab. The T300 Direct Drive Smart Trainer is a third generation unit from Machine out of China and it is their flagship bike trainer. On to the technical specifications and details of this trainer, it's a direct drive interactive smart trainer. So you remove your rear wheel from your bike, mount your bike and away you go. It has interactive control with sim mode, erg mode, etc. Bike compatibility out of the box is only quick release 130 and 135. The trainer does support through axles, but you need to purchase those adapters separately aftermarket. The T300 comes with a Shimano SRAM 8 to 11 speed compatible free hub like most trainers do. SRAM XDR 12 speed is sold separately aftermarket. There's also no cassette supplied with this trainer. Supported connections, you get AMP Plus Power, AMP Plus FEC, and Bluetooth Smart. The data transmitted from the T300 is power and speed only. You do not get cadence with this training. You'll need an external cadence sensor to measure that. Speed is only via AMP Plus FEC and BLE2. You don't get the AMP Plus speed capabilities with this unit. The power accuracy claims are within plus or minus 2%. Calibration is done via a spin down with their app. Max grade simulation, 22%. Max wattage, 2600 watts. Now the flywheel weight and size isn't listed, but they do list a moment of inertia. I have nothing to reference that to, so it doesn't mean a lot when you're putting the foot on the pedals in the bike and telling you what it feels like. I'll dive into that later on, but that number there doesn't really have much of a context for me to explain what it is. I simply don't know. Noise level, 56 decibels at 1.5 meters, 30 k's an hour. Again, does depend on the environment that it's measured in, but I can confirm this trainer is very, very quiet. You'll see that in the video later on. Power source, mains power, firmware upgradable via their app, and as a bonus, you get an AMP plus USB stick in the box. For me, I'd rather see the through axle adapters though, rather than the USB AND stick, but it is what it is with what comes in the box. Price-wise, in Australia, it comes in at $14.99, which is equivalent to just over $1,100 US. Now, availability is only in select regions. You are not likely to see these in the US of A. So on paper and in pricing, this unit looks to compete with the Saruses, the Wahoos, the Taxes, and the Elites of this world. How does it stack up? Well, first let's get it unboxed before we get into all the details. So here it is, the Magine T300 fully assembled out of the box, minus the cassette with the power adapters, quick release adapter, ant stick key and the manual in Chinese. Now first things first, I will check the latest firmware for this by connecting to the Machine Utility app. From where we can control the trainer with some basic target power slope and resistance control. We can also switch the light on and off, that's a bit of fun. But do note, down the bottom there is a new version available to update for the firmware. So from 106 to 110, we'll hit upgrade on that. And it takes around 90 seconds to complete. Now the height of the rear axle comes in at 33.5 centimeters, which is very close to that of a rear wheel axle height on a bike, meaning you don't technically need to use a front riser block. However, it's my preference to ride with the front tilted up a little bit indoors, so that's what I use. Now out of the box, the unit was a little unstable. So a quick adjustment to the feet on both sides and it's good to go. It passes the wiggle test. And from here, you'll also hear it pass the sound test too.
Now, somebody posted up over on Strava that the T300 is not compatible with the current version of Trainer Road for Trainer Control. So I did put that to the test and you'll see the transition change here in wattage and the trainer doesn't follow along in erg control mode. So at this point in time with the current version of Trainer Road, this trainer is not supported for control. I do believe the beta version of Trainer Road is supported though. So do keep an eye out for that in the near future if you have one of these trainers. And then it's over to Zwift and Titans Grove. The field test that I do for sim mode because it goes up and down and up and down. Almost zero flat gradient on Titans Grove. Very good test of the sim mode gradient changes on the trainer and also a very good warm up prior to the spin down calibration. And speaking of the spin down calibration process underway here, it has to be the most precise spin down target I have ever seen with 36.96 required before the spin down will kick in. Okay, and from there, it was onto the standard Llama Lab test, 200 watt steady state, switching up into 250 watt steady state. There's the change right there. Takes a few seconds to stabilize, and away we go. And then into the 20 second over and under intervals, which really does test the trainer's ability to change those erg levels and also stabilize in that short period of time. Now, before diving deep down the rabbit hole for the data review of the T300, my initial ride impressions. And first up on my list were the noise levels. The unit is quiet. It's quieter than your drivetrain, so there's no need to do any comparative testing or pull out a decibel meter. The thing is quiet. That's a tick. The ride feel, it was good. Very much like a kicker or kicker core unit where it has a nice big flywheel that you just cannot trick or spin out in sprints in the correct gearing. The sim mode gradient changes were smooth and responsive, so that's a tick there as well. Erg mode was relatively stable, so we weren't seeing any big over and under oscillations on erg, so it was able to hold a certain point but it was the power numbers where the T300 really didn't meet expectations. If you're familiar with my other reviews on this channel, you're no doubt familiar with the Llama Lab Test. It's my own protocol that I've developed over a number of years that tests both trainers and power meters across a wide range of use cases. Those being erg mode, so stability, erg mode transitions and responsiveness, sim mode of trainers, so responsiveness of that, sprints looking at peak power and resistance unit capabilities, power reporting and accuracy, and more recently adding flywheel speed tests to the mix. The Llama Lab test covers a wide range of power zones that represent typical usage for amateur through to competitive level cyclists. It also identifies areas that need further attention and follow up test rides. Okay, let's get down to business looking at the data sets collected from the T300 Smart Trainer over the last week over here on my favorite website on the internet, the DC Rainmaker Analysis Tool. I have four data sets to go through, the final one being the most power I've put out over an hour indoors for a very, very long time. If you tuned into the live stream, you would have seen me suffering through this, all for the purpose of collecting data for this test. First up, number one, Vector 3's up against the Magine T300 standard Llama lab test, 10 minute warm up with a spin down performed, and then into the steady state intervals, 200 into 250 watt steady state, diving in a little closer to that, and we can see the trainer reporting a little under what the pedals were reporting. I would trust the pedals as true power, and the trainer there a little bit smoothed in its power reporting and also a little under reporting what the real power was. So 237, 224, bit of a gap there that I will not excuse through drive train losses. Into the sprint, and something interesting happens with the sprint here. So pretty close in the maximal power sprints there, just sort of over shooting a little bit through here. 
But my concern is after a very hard effort on the T300, the power goes to zero for a number of seconds. On a platform like Zwift, zero power means putting the brakes on and coming to a stop very, very quickly. So three data points there, there and there reporting zero watts when I wasn't doing zero watts pulls me up and is going to be very, very detrimental to my in-game speed on Zwift. Not ideal. Diving into the 20 second over and under intervals, and we can see through here, the data coming out of the T300, even with the smoothing option turned off, is still smoothed to some extent. Under reporting for the 150 zones and over reporting for the 350s here, here, and not matching the 450s here and here. So under reporting and over reporting. It's a true over and under trainer, but the power was not matching where it should be and the resistance levels as such were too low. Now I've got this paired as the power sensor and the controllable on Zwift for these tests. So the power that it's doing is the power it believes it's doing. The power on the pedals is the power that I'm actually doing. On to the new addition to the Llama Lab test, which is the flywheel speed test, which is the set point of 225 watts in the easiest gear or the slowest flywheel speed. And every 90 seconds, stepping down a few gears and spinning that flywheel speed up with exactly the same ERG set point set. So the interval on Zwift is four minutes 30 and nothing else changes other than me changing down through gears. You can see here with the slowest flywheel speed, the power accuracy isn't too bad. We step it up to about the same flywheel speed that I use for the Llama Lab test steady state, 200 and 250. You can see that start to separate there. F higher flywheel speed, more separation, and into the big ring and really spinning things up, and the trainer really separates there. With the jagged purple line being the Vector 3s, true power, and the blue smooth line there being the Machine T300. Bit of a concern there that it only operates nicely at the very slow flywheel speed. Something to look into in my further testing. And then two hard sprint jams, I'll call these. Not all out sprints, just really hard efforts on the pedals to see where the power matches. So only at 700 watts here. And in both instances, the T300 is overshooting those sprints um, or hard accelerations, I wouldn't quite call them a sprint. So from here, we're looking at 617 watts on the pedals versus nearly 800 watts on the machine. So overshooting there with power too. So the takeouts from here, there's a few more things to look into. And it was probably wise of me to put another power meter on the bike and record that in conjunction with the T300 for my second Llama Lab test. And that is right here. So diving into the 200 and 250 watts minus the uh, dropouts, and we can see here the Powder Max Ngco and the Vector 3s, like two peas in a pod, they agree with each other, that's real power. And under reporting is the Machine T300 at the 200 and the 250 watt zone. Now, if you look very, very closely, you can see a slight downward trend from the real power on the two on-bike power meters and the Machine T300. Switching this Llama Lab test data to 100 second smoothing, and you can see the drifting down of the two power meters on the bike up against the Machine T300. Initially, the T300 reading under by about 13 or 14 watts, and at the end of that 10 minutes or thereabouts, it was a lot closer. It was probably within eight watts. So a slight downward trend indicating there's some thermal drift or something going on and more testing required. Now flipping back to the three second average so we can see what took place here with the further testing of my over and unders based on the results that I got from test number one. So the first set of four that I did here was exactly the same as test number one with the two power meters on the bike. So you can see here the Ngico and the Vector 3s, happy days. With the Machine T300 under reporting and over reporting the real power that was taking place on the pedals. And then based on the data from test number one where it showed the slow flywheel speed was better for power accuracy, I was in the 39, 25 on the back. And you can see here, it hit the 350 watt zone a lot better. So the trainer performs better with a very slow flywheel speed for this ERG zone or ERG set point. But unfortunately no dice on the 450 watt zones with the slower flywheel speed, still unable to hit the correct target watts that was happening on the pedals and the crank by around 30 watts. And finishing up this test here with two short, sharp pedal jams, as I call them, really hard efforts, out of the saddle and back in the saddle, really pumping on the pedals for around 600 watts. As we saw in data set number one, the T300 was overshooting the power. As we see here in data set number two, up against the Vector 3s and the Powder Max Ngico, it is overshooting by quite an amount and sustainably overshooting as well. This is a concern. Further down the rabbit hole and onto data set number three. Now this was all about putting the magnifying glass a little closer to the T300 to work out what was going on in erg mode with flywheel speed. So after a 10 minute warm up where the T300 
T300 was under reporting power up against the Powermax Ngco and the Vector 3s. I had an erg mode set point of 200 watts. Now every minute, I step down a gear. So starting off in the easiest gear, stepping down a gear, flywheel speed a little higher, down a gear again, flywheel speed a little higher. And you can see the trend here. The higher the flywheel speed, the less ability they had to hold that set point and report accurate power. So the trend here, going from around 12 watts too low, up around here with the real power being the top line there of the two power meters on the bike to being around 30 watts off through here and then when the trainer was put in the big ring and spun right up and again most trainers don't like erg mode at high flywheel speeds things just fell apart so i'm not too concerned about this but i am concerned with that line trending upwards and not providing you the correct resistance it's reporting a few more over and under tests of that sim mode to have a look at what was going on there and again consistency it was the name of the game a little bit laggy and a bit of an overshoot through here. Here wasn't too bad, overshooting and undershooting as I stood up and sat down pretty quick and tried to do a really smooth pedal stroke. And the last one here again is of concerns. We're nearly 100 watts over what I was actually doing on the pedals with the machine reporting too high. And then when sitting down and just grinding up the hill, it was under reporting by quite a bit. So it's pretty clear to see when the T300 is put up against known good power meters, it's definitely not within the plus or minus 2% range as sold. But wait, there's more. That thermal drift. I needed one more test to really put that to the sword. Just so happens to be, Tour de Zwift Stage 3 was most of the way up virtual Mon Von 2. Thermal drift is going to be a good story with this. Oh yes, that effort is going to take me days to recover from, but it was fully worth it because we have data like this. Now, forgetting the dropout party that happened at the end, we can see here during the warm-up, the T300 again under-reporting, and then up against the NGCO, we'll dive in here. And you can no doubt see the separation that's happening right there at the end. So the blue being the T300, the purple being the power to max NGCO, which I would call true power. You can see here through the start of the race, it was under reading a little bit, the T300 that is, into the randomness that is the bunch ride and positioning, and then onto the climb. And you can see here, power wasn't too bad. They agreed, the T300 and the Power to Max NGCO. And then as things went on and went on and went on, uh, the average power for this, it was 301 watts for 55 minutes near the end of this. And you can see here, as time went on, the power drifted, drifted, drifted. Now the purple line here, I will trust as true power because you can see here, that's how my effort felt. Was I doing near 350 at the end? Absolutely not. And you can see there, the drift is just getting further and further and further. Switching this up to 100 seconds smoothing and you can see exactly what's taking place. So under reporting from the trainer, matching, happy for a little bit. And then as soon as we hit the climb and the steady state happens, things get warmer and warmer and warmer. That power number just separates and separates. Now I did have the power to max NG paired as my power source. So I was riding with true power in game. Right up to the end here, we have a separation of 48, 47, 48 watts. And right near the end, just before the sprint party and the dropouts, we're near on 50 watts separation from the T300 versus the Power to Max NGCO. So 300 watts isn't outside the realm of normal use cases. It's definitely not setting the house on fire. There are amateurs out there doing 350, maybe 400 watts for the hour. There's some very, very strong amateurs out there. The pros doing 450, maybe 480 watts for the hour. So I would call 300 for 55 minutes a standard use case for this trainer. For it then to be 50 watts out at the end of this effort, that is, well, what do you say? That's unacceptable for the power ranges and absolutely never anywhere near the power accuracy claims as sold. Like all trainers and power meters, I gave the T300 every opportunity to pass the Llama lab test. And where it didn't and needed more attention, I'd retested and retested again where it wasn't meeting the claimed specifications. And you've seen the data from a number of rides there. It just does not meet the specifications as published or as sold. Having said that, let's look at the pros and the cons. First up, starting with the pros, the unit is well packaged, although it does have this side up printed in two different directions on the box. It's easy to set up out of the box. You just unpack it, put the legs out, install a cassette, and away you go. It has adjustable feet, that's a tick. It is quiet, as mentioned, and it has a good ride feel to it with the flywheel. 
Ant Plus and Bluetooth support is good that works on most platforms at this point in time. Now onto the cons, or what needs to be addressed with this trainer. First up, no through axle adapters are supplied in the box. In 2020 and 2021, that needs to be a standard. No cadence data transmitted from this unit. Competing products have cadence data. Power accuracy, as you saw, is not within plus or minus 2%. The thermal drift is a major, major problem with this unit at the higher zones for longer time periods. The erg mode issues with the flywheel speeds in certain set points not being met. That needs to be looked into. As you saw in the data before, it couldn't hold 450 erg. And the price. There are similar smart trainers on the market that are cheaper and have more features. Given the ride feel and resistance unit on the T300 is pretty good, it would be a suitable trainer if you already had a power meter on your bike that you could use for power and cadence data. However, you're then paying for features of this trainer that you're not using. And you're paying even more if you need those through axle adapters. So for me at the moment, there's too much of a gap between the unit specifications and what's sold and what's actually delivered when you get your bike on the unit and look at those numbers. And it's not based on opinion, you saw the data before. So finally today, something I'll touch on just lightly at the end of the video, and it's a very, very serious topic that I'm sure the judgment day is coming for sports tech companies. And that is when companies produce hardware with technical attributes and specifications that aren't met with the delivered product, there are serious consequences in particular markets. And that is for providing false or misleading product claims. A very high profile case of this would be the Volkswagen emissions scandal from a few years ago where Volkswagen delivered something entirely different than what was on the specification sheet for their cars. Now, of course, indoor bike trainers and power meters aren't quite at the level of the auto industry, but it's something they need to be conscious of because as soon as someone's alerted at something like the ACCC here in Australia, they'll be hit with some pretty big fines. So from here, I'll keep an eye on the firmware updates from Machine for the T300, which may address a number of the issues that I've seen this week in the Llama Lab. I'll put a pinned comment post below so you can keep track of those as well. And with that, Thanks for watching.